Uh, welcome to the Actors Side. I'm Pete Hammond, and today, very, very happy to have Isabel Huppert with us. Uh, thank you for joining us here on, on the Actors Side, where we talk about acting. And my gosh, if there's somebody to talk about acting with, it's certainly you. You look at your credits, over 100 films, countless stage uh, plays, television. Uh, you've done it all. I think you hold the record for the number of Cesar nominations, uh, 15, and you've won every kind of international award. It's quite a career. What is it that sparks you to have this career since the beginning of the 70s, I think your first mm -hmm. film was, mm -hmm. and you started very young. Yes. What, what was it that got you going into acting uh, that has become so successful? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I did it. I started, and here I was. I was an actress. I never really thought about it before I started doing it, actually. It's not like a, I woke up one morning saying, wow, I want to be an actress. <laughs> but yes, in fact, I found myself being an actress, that's for sure. And from the very beginning, I think I was uh, mostly attracted to work with great people, great directors, and that's really those great directors that really drew to me to my to my work and to my performances most of the time. Was it your mother that encouraged you to get into acting or initially? Yes she did actually. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I mean maybe like maybe not all mothers but like at least mine, you know. She 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 knew deep inside that I was meant to be an actress. And she was always very encouraging for wow. me to do it. I wonder how she had that sense at that early an age that that this is something, because that is the opposite that's of what true. you hear. Well, I think that's the, the mother instinct, you know. I mean, sometimes mothers, they know a lot about their children. In terms of, uh, you mentioned uh, directors, and I looked at the list of the great directors you have worked with. Um, what is it that draws you? Is it the material always first, the script always first, or uh, do you like working with the... Well, it's a combination. When, when, when it's, uh, it, it's about those great directors, I think it's just a perspective of working with them, you know. And with Coach Abol, he always came with a new idea, new script. I mean, what we did was a very versatile material, you know. We went to comedy, to drama, to historical pieces like Story of Woman, more political like the Ceremony. And uh, no matter what he was going to do, uh, he by definition agreed with what he was going to come up with, you know. I mean, and then came the script, but, you know, it, I knew it was going to be okay. And it's the same with Michael Haneke. I'm not pretty much regarding on the script. It's, it's of course it's different when it's something that you don't know, or even more so when it's a first-time director. Then you have to go with your intuition and different uh, criteria of choices. I recently talked to Paul Verhoeven, who just had nothing but praise, as you can imagine, for you, because he tried to make L as an American film first, an English language film, and uh, and. They could not find an actress that would touch that yes, role. Yes, luckily I have to say so. I yeah. Do so. <laughs> Why do you think that is? I mean, it's such a great role, but nobody wanted to. I mean, you have always been known for not having any trepidation about going into roles, whether it's considered risky or not. But why do you think so many? Well, I think you know uh, the, the big difference between me and 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 and, and other people or other actresses is the the fact that I read the book first, and I think that. Uh, reading the book, you know, uh, give you a, a, a different approach to to the picture. You know, it's it's and, and uh, I think it might be the only reason. I'm sure that if they had read the book, I would have been in bad shape because then <laughs> they would have done the film and uh, I wouldn't be here to talk about it. So, oh, really? Yeah, okay. I think so. I think it made a big difference. I mean, the script is a rough material, you know, and it's a it's a bit, you know, it's it's more difficult to really uh, embrace a, a story, and especially in that case, you know, where it's so complex and you have so many layers and it's very, very ambiguous. So I think the book was there really to make me willing to do it and I'm sure that you know, it would have been the same for anybody else. I'm really proud of the film and I'm, I'm, I'm so thrilled that I was able to work with Paul Verhoeven. I mean, for me, he's a really a major director and uh, I've, I discovered his work a long time ago when I saw first uh, Turkish Delight. And he was meant to do that film, you know. He's, uh, because the, the film combines, and or the, the book did already, you know, the, uh, combines several genres, several types of, of films. You know, it goes from comedy to tragedy to from the Hitchcock uh, thriller to the psychological portrait of a woman. And, and he's a master in combining uh, all these different types of making movies and, uh, and yet with connections, you know. It's not like, you know, you have four different films within the same film, but he's really 
extraordinary. Now you've seen it with audiences, I assume, in around the world now in different places. And yes, it's not so controversial, I would yeah. say. The movie is really about it's about this woman, you know, and we can only guess, you know, why she does what she does. And purposely, Verhoeven leaves big holes, big gaps, you know, that he and he expects people to fill in, and and everybody is is likely to give his own interpretation of why she behaves the way she behaves. Uh, so. There was a lot of depth in the film, a lot of complexity. Uh, so it brings a lot of discussions. Well, when I first heard about it, I said, well, I wonder how this will play. And then when I saw it, I thought, oh, wow, this is an amazing movie. But I still wondered how it would play to audiences here. And I've now noticed that it's playing extremely well, you know? Yes, it apparently does. <laughs> Which I'm, you know, in this yeah. country, you never know what's going to happen. Well, so. pe <laughs> people s seem to get the film. And I think the reason why. Of course, I mean, not on the surface, and not only on the surface, but the whole movie is, is provocative, disturbing. But I think that um, it was, it's, it's a bit like in The Piano Teacher, you know. I think that deep inside, people f acknowledge a, a depth, a, a, a kind of a, almost, I don't know, a great auto authenticity, you know, also to, to the character, to the story. There is something honest in the film too. I wanted to ask you about your first, uh, your first English film was with Otto Preminger, was mm -hmm. it not? That it was. I got to know about Otto, working, uh, Otto Preminger had such a reputation as not being that friendly to actors. <laughs> he wasn't very friendly, he was friendly to me by the way. Was he? But he, was, he wasn't very friendly with anybody, you know, I mean his, his mantra would be, every day he would say, if you are not happy, you go back to Paris. <laughs> so everybody would go back to Paris because we were shooting on the Riviera. Even, and even Robert Mitchum didn't go back to Paris, but went back to America, actually. And that was the end of a, that was very sad, because that was the end of a great relationship, a great creative relationship between Otto Breminger and Robert Mitchum at the time. And then he was replaced by Peter O'Toole. And uh, the movie is quite something, you know, it's a very strange object. Rosebud. It's, it was, called. it's called Rosebud, yeah. yeah. You did, in 1980, you did one of the notorious films of all time when it came out, Heaven, Heaven's Gate. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that was not shot in mm -hmm. France, that was... Oh no, that, that was shot <laughs> in Montana. Yeah, yeah. So when you were making that, I mean, you had a bird's eye view of what was going on. Was it as it was reported that this was going to be just like an out of control? No, I mean, and that was that was a trip, you know, for me. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I was there for two months, and then I ended up being there for seven months. You know. yeah. And it was one of the most memorable uh, moments of my professional life. To me, he was, you know, one of the greatest American directors until he passed away. We couldn't tell. I mean, we, we all so devoted to what he was doing and completely, you know, we, we, we knew we, that we were doing something special, that's for sure. And even though the movie was uh, rejected like it was, you know, I never, I never felt trust. I mean, I never lost trust in the film. I, still, I always thought it was a masterpiece, and I still do. What are you looking forward to in the future? I have to say, I sat here maybe two weeks ago with Jessica Chastain, mm -hmm. and I asked her which actresses that she admires, and I'm, they can vouch for this. The first thing she said was Isabelle Huppert. And she said, why? Because she is fearless, and she does, she acts. You know, she acts wherever she has yeah, to. That's very sweet of her. That's also the redhead connection, I think. <laughs> but uh, yes, I did a movie with uh, Jessica, the Ellie, Eleanor Rigby, you know? Uh -huh, yes, that the, together. the yes, disappearance. Uh, the disappearance of That was a very interesting movie. Yeah. It's in two parts, yeah. In two parts. Well, she's, she, that's what she said. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting because you have never sort of walked away from your belief of what you should do as an actor. Uh, I don't think I had any other choice also <laughs> <laughs> in a certain way, you know? Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, you, you get uh, praised and admired for what you do and you think that it's only about, you know, choices, but sometimes you make choices, you, you do what you do because you can't do anything else. In a way, um, I don't know, when I look at my itinerary, I think I was, I didn't have any other choice to be curious, to, to be willing to work abroad with certain people. I always felt, even my, in my own country, at the, I mean, let's say I'm a well-known actress, I work with great people, but I feel uh, at the center, but I also feel, um, on the side most of the time. Which I think, it, yes, it's uh, interesting. I think it gives you a lot of uh, 
curiosity too, in a way? Well, fortunately, we have so many chances to see Isabelle Huppert this year in so many films and onward. And on stage, our film, thank you for what you do. And thank you for joining us on the actor's side today. Thank you very much.